Hey folks, uh, back again with another vlog. This is uh, Mary and Max, uh, commissioned by Mary the Pope. Um, thanks for backing, Mary. Mm, thanks for getting me to watch this movie. It was really good. Um, I think this is my first time doing a vlog for a movie rather than an episode of something, uh, but that's always been an option for people who are commissioning episodes. Um, and this, this was a good movie. Um, I had not heard of it prior to Mary commissioning it. I had to look it up. Um, apparently, it's from 2009. It was on a lot of people's short lists for the Oscars, but then, uh, the distribution company elected not to release it in American theaters, which meant it wasn't eligible for the Oscar. Uh, best animated Oscar, I should say. Mm. And before we go any further, I just want to apologize in advance uh, for any sniffling or throat clearing or anything like that I do. Um, I'm a little bit stuffed up, um, and I've been doing a lot of talking this weekend because. Um, uh, I recorded this, v I'm recording this vlog, I did like a two and a half hour Skype interview earlier about, uh, one of my books, and I just recorded a replay episode, so I'm, I'm a little bit gravelly. Um, excuse me. Mm. <clears throat> Sorry. Anyway, uh, this is a little bit of an unusual vlog, because normally I do them immediately after watching. Uh, whatever it is that I'm talking about, I couldn't do that with this movie. Um, like I said, this movie was really good, but more to the point, it was like being kicked repeatedly in the heart. Um, it, like I wasn't like distraught or anything, but I just didn't feel like I could sit down and talk about it uh, for like a day. Uh, it's been about 28, 30 hours since I watched it. Because mm. I watched it on Sunday evening and it's now uh, like 4 o'clock Tuesday morning. Where do I even start? Um, first of all, it's stop motion and I love stop motion animation. There's just way too little of it out there. And this was a good, solid example of it. Um, it had a very distinct visual style. Um, sort of Roll Dollish in its character designs. Mm, but there was also a trace of Charles... Not Roll, Roll Doll. Who does the illustrations for Roll Doll books? Um, Quentin something. I forget. Um, but that kind of style. And a little bit of Charles Schultz, too. Um, some of the facial expressions were very peanuts, especially that kind of wavy smile that his characters would sometimes get. Uh, that showed up a couple times. Mm. And there was some interesting stuff being done with color, too, where, uh, so... The story of it is basically an unlikely friendship between pen pals. One is a, uh, it's the 19, it starts in the 1970s, it ends in 1990 something. Um, and it starts when an eight year old girl writes more or less at random to, uh, and she's in Australia. She writes to this man in New York who's, um, like in his 40s and lives a very kind of lonely, isolated existence, and is, uh, and, uh, he's diagnosed with Asperger's, uh, later in the movie. Um, and what we basically have is this very lonely, severely neglected child who doesn't have any friends, and kind of develops this odd friendship with this Mm, adult who is, I mean, he's at, he, he, he makes the point, and he's fairly adamant about it, that he doesn't feel disabled. Um, he, he, but he's a very unusual man. 
um, and very also very isolated, very lonely. Um, neither of them have ever really had a friend, and they become each other's first friend, and honestly, from what we see, only friend. Um, Mary maybe has friends later on in life, but not really. And they both kind of got neighbors that they are friendly with. That's not the same thing as being a friend. Um, and so, yeah. Between neglected child who's bullied and grown man who lives alone in a shitty apartment, um, this had some emotional resonance for me, yeah. Uh, and that's really what it's about, is the emotion of it, is this relationship, because it could very easily have become, like, the magical, uh, disabled person who inspires the little girl to come out of her shell. Or the magic pixie dream girl who helps the lonely man, uh, come into his own. And instead, it's neither of those things, because... Over the course of it, they both make mistakes which cause them, cause them to move apart for a while. Um, at first, he has kind of a breakdown over her writing him a letter asking about uh, sex. And he doesn't write to her for like, I think, four years. Um, then she, uh, much later, uh, when she's, she, she's an adult, she becomes a researcher uh, uh, in psychology and neurology and writes a book about, um, like, autism and Asperger's and so forth, and writes to him talking about the cure. And he's furious about this because he had said to her in the past, he doesn't feel disabled, he doesn't want to be cured. Um, and she gets, like, so he cuts her off for a long time, uh, out of anger. And, you know, so the relationship is far from perfect, it's far from flawless, and it's just this really interesting combination in the movie as a whole between kind of a very, you know, it's two lonely people finding each other and developing a friendship that helps them both make it through life. And that's, you know, kind of this very hopeful, kind of sweet thing, but it's also incredibly cynical about the ways in which people can hurt each other, um, and the ways in which people can be self-centered or uh, neglectful or just screw up. Mm. And thus cause each other pain. Uh, for example, uh, her parents, who are probably, her mom is definitely an alcoholic, her dad is probably an alcoholic, um, and they screw up her life pretty badly. Or, you know, when she is becoming depressed and withdrawn, uh, this causes her husband to, you know, this is much later in the movie when she's grown up, uh, her husband leaves her uh, for his own pen pal, who's a man living in New Zealand. And that's both of them. You know, you know, she's withdrawn into this depressed state. She can't really help it. And he's just trying, you know, he's, he tried his best, but he can't take it anymore. Like, neither of them exactly does anything wrong, but the relationship still falls apart because they can't, you know, because of outside factors and because of things they can't cope with. Um... And then there are moments that are just straight up bleak. Um, there's a sequence where she attempts to, where uh, Mary uh, attempts to kill herself. And in the middle of the attempt, as the camera is panning around her, um, we see like like her torso turns transparent, and we see for the first time that she's pregnant. And it's like. Well, shit, this just went from dark to 
bleak as hell. Like, she probably doesn't even know. Because she's been drinking and just took a bunch of pills and, like... You know, it's just... Like, what is she going to do with that? And eventually she does have, presumably, that baby. Because uh, a year later she's got a baby. Um... But I imagine that was a struggle to decide whether or not to do that. Um, and that didn't make her depression any easier to deal with. Um, I mean, it's a fascinating film. It's... Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. It's a fascinating film. It's visually very interesting. I like how when they exchange items, it retains the color of the color scheme of where they came from. So like New York is black and white. Australia has this kind of sepia tone. Um, but there is color that's all kind of yellowed out. Uh, whereas there's no color at all in New York. It's all black and white. But, um, the items that they sent back and forth retain the, the color of where they came from. So when she, when Mary sends Max, like, a red pom-pom, it remains red in the New York scenes. And when he sends her gifts from New York, they remain black and white. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So it's kind of like they're introducing things into each other's lives. She's introducing color into his gray existence. He's introducing her. What he's introducing her to is actually an interesting question. Like, what does black and white symbolize there? Um, and I think maybe some sense, like, because her home life is so chaotic between her drunk out of her mind mother and her father just retreats there's no order there's no stability in her home and so i think that might be part of what max provides her because he's got this very rigid approach to the world um and she i think is appreciates that i think that helps her i think the little bit of black and white he introduces into her world her very brown world uh, helps kind of balance that out. Um, there's some other, like, just absolutely, like, moments that would be mawkish in most movies. They work here in part because of the slightly grotesque character designs and in part because the movie doesn't flinch away from showing some of the darker stuff and the conflicts and so forth. So there's a scene where he mentions that he's never cried out of sadness. You know, he has difficulty expressing his emotions, and one aspect of that is that he, he's cried from chopping onions, but he's never cried because he was sad. So Mary makes herself sad, and this is when she's still like a small child. She makes herself sad and cries and fills a bottle with her tears and sends them to him. And he keeps those. He keeps the drawing of herself that she sent him in, his, in her very first letter. He keeps everything she sends him, uh, which builds up to a very, like, sadly sweet moment at the end of the movie, uh, which is kind of the overall tone of the movie, is this kind of sad sweetness. Um, there's a wistfulness to it. There's a playfulness to it. But it's also, like, willing, like, to just unblinkingly look into things like disability and how people with disabilities are treated, um, or, you know, depending on whether you want to define autism as a disability, how people on the autistic spectrum are treated, um, and how people are labeled as disabled and then treated as a result of that, let's put it that way. Um, or how, you know, depression and suicide, um, you know, it's frequently heartbreaking and yet very sweet. 
Uh, I don't know what else I can say other than I really recommend checking this movie out. Uh, the only place I was able to find it was uh, Amazon uh, Instant Video. Uh, I was not able to find it on any other streaming services, at least in the U.S. Uh, I, based on stuff I saw when I was Googling, I think it might be on Netflix in other countries. But in the U.S., at least, the only place I was able to find it was Amazon. Uh, but I really recommend it. I, again, really want to thank uh, Mary the Pope for getting me to watch this. And, yeah, uh, it was a really good movie. Um, not much I can say about it beyond that. Bye.